that today gynecology practice has changed completely. Today, half of my OPD is filled with PCOD and endometriosis. What were you seeing before? So earlier, people were having, you know, problems like heavy periods and, um, you know, fibroids and other things. But today, these are the problems which are affecting modern women. I mean, the statistics say that one in every three to five women across the globe is suffering from some kind of manifestation of how significant stress is affecting the PCOS? If there is something wrong here, now the periods are bound to be getting disturbed. You know, Instagram, you have to be there. Right. You have to be watching the latest Netflix. Your DP has to look good. Right. You need to look good. So there's so much of pressure. Um, and on top of that, hormones are not functioning the way they should. So that's the biggest problem. You're using women smoking? A lot. Smoking is one of the major reasons for the premature ovarian insufficiency. People at least should be made to aware that the solution to PCOS is not a metformin or a contraceptive tablet. If you want to reverse your PCOS, then you need to take control of the entire thing in your hands. What is now, the ideal time to be pregnant? Early 20s. What is the common menopausal age these days? Any woman who gets a menopause earlier than 40 years, we again say it's For every woman who's watching this, they must be selfish when it comes to their self-care. Self -care. It's very important. Hi, Dr. Anjali. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much for inviting me. It's my pleasure and my <laughs> so, honor to be here on your show. <laughs> so so good to see you in person. So good to see you. Um, you're doing a wonderful job online and uh, kudos to you to educating all the women. So we wanted your expertise and then this hour is to extract all the knowledge from you mm -hmm. as much as possible. <laughs> <laughs> so right off the bat, getting into the discussion is that. So, you know, um, in California, while I'm practicing as a gastroenterologist, I see a lot of patients with fatty liver. Okay. A lot of patients. And uh, the uh, recently, I've been seeing, noticing a gender difference with a lot of women mm -hmm. coming in with fatty liver. Yeah. And uh, underlying thing for every, uh, every woman, for a common denominator, is PCOS. Yeah. Right, PCOS. Mm -hmm. And as you as you all been talking in your channel, as PCOS is not a disease. Uh, it's basically a symptom. Uh, it's like a syndrome of uh, hormonal problems. Mm. Um, so people think, as you mentioned, people think that there is hormonal imbalance all over. Um, so in PCOS, uh, the underlying problem is, as you have mentioned multiple times in the videos, is Maybe not the actual hormones that is causing the problems. It is actually the insulin, which is the main reason for all those issues. So before discussing about why that could be, if you can teach us and the audience in terms of what a normal menstrual cycle is and how, which are the hormones that we should look for so that we can uh, understand how this whole thing works and we can talk about the treatment options eventually. Okay. So, I, uh, it's very important for every woman to know what is the so-called the right menstrual cycle. Mm. So, I would like to say that there is nothing called the perfect or the right menstrual cycle. It varies from one person to another person. So, there is nothing called as a 28-day cycle. A normal menstrual cycle could vary anything between, let's say, 22 to 35 days. And the flow also could vary anything between 2 to 7 days. But in case the variation occurs more than 8 days, now that is abnormal. Which means earlier, if your period was 22 days and now it's coming to 32 days, now this is a problem. In case your earlier period was 40 days and now it is coming at 20 days, now that is a problem. That could be indicative of some other problem. And obviously, the period should not be really painful. Once in a while, a little bit of pain is fine for every woman, but it should not be like a woman has to take three, four painkillers every day. So that's also not normal and it could be indicative of an underlying problem. 
there should be no bleeding in between the periods. There should be no bleeding after the intercourse. There should be no bleeding after a woman has gone into menopause. So this is what is the definition of a normal menstrual cycle. Now, um, the periods don't just happen at the uterus and the ovary. Now, it starts at the level of the brain. The entire story of the period starts at the level of the brain. So, from a brain, so we have a gland called hypothalamus, then a pituitary gland. So, from there, certain hormones are released. From the hypothalamus, then it acts on the pituitary. From the pituitary, then it acts on the ovary. And then finally, it acts on the uterus for the final periods to happen. So medically, you also know this is known as HPO axis, which is hypothalamic pituitary ovarian axis. So in case if there is something wrong here, now the periods are bound to be getting disturbed. So, um, you know, that's why when a woman is stressed, you know, she has her exams, you know, she has any kind of a stress which is bothering her there. The periods are the first thing which will get affected. So that's why, you know, any kind of stress will affect your periods. Is it common you see in your practice? Very common, very mm -hmm. common. Mm -hmm. In fact, the modern uh, day women, in fact, the modern OPD today, uh, you know, I tell my juniors also, I'm a postgraduate teacher, that today gynecology practice has changed completely. Today, half of my OPD is filled with PCOD and endometriosis. It's like, you know, what we read in our times has completely changed. What were you seeing before? So earlier, people were having, you know, problems like heavy periods and, uh, you know, fibroids and other things. But today, infertility, PCOS, weight gain, hypothyroidism, these are the problems which are affecting modern women. I mean, 20 years back, hardly there were any I IVF centers. Today, in modern metro cities, every nook and corner has a IVF center. So, you know, that's how uh, the entire physiology of this HPO axis has changed in modern <laughs> times. It's amazing. It's amazing. Yes. I remember when I was in medical school, hmm. um, the when you do the gynecology rotations, right? Mm -hmm. So, the only thing that they keep on talking about uh, is fibroid. <laughs> <laughs> It was only fibroids. It was yeah. only fibroids. PC overs, you know, they also would say it's a very rare disease. <laughs> so when I did my post graduation, of course, that was way back in ninety one. So PCS was a small chapter in our books, and mm. we never used to read that chapter, thinking that nobody's going to ask this question in the final <laughs> exam. And today, I mean, the statistics say that one in every three to five women across the globe is suffering from some kind of manifestation of PCOS. Mm. It's, it's like a gynecological epidemic. Mm. It's, it's huge. Like one in every third woman is suffering from this. Wow. wow. So um, if my understanding is right, hypothalamic, pituit hypothalamic pituitary ovarian axis. If there is a disturbance in this connection, the reproductive hormones are not secreted properly. Correct. And that could be an initial manifestation of what we call as PCOS. Yes. Um, so I, I'm going to tell you what my I, understanding of menstrual cycle is. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to refresh my gynecology thing here. <laughs> okay. okay. So let's take a 28-day menstrual cycle. The first five days is the shedding of the endometrium, which is a lining of the uterus. And it starts bleeding because the uterus is ready for getting ready for conception, mm. getting ready for possible fertilization. Okay. okay. Let me see how much of gynecology do you remember? <laughs> then I'll correct so it. So first five days, the endometrium is shut off. Yes. The next is a follicular phase where yes. day six to day fourteen, your uh, follicle stimulating hormone is stimulating the ovarian follicles to develop. Absolutely. Correct. And there is an ovum inside. It's yes. waiting to come out. Yes. At the day 14, hmm. around uh, 14 day. That's where the another surge happens called luteinizing hormone, LH. Then after that, let's say that ovum is released. If it gets fertilized by a sperm, then pregnancy happens. Correct. If a sperm is not there, then it stays for like 10... 14 days, then it disintegrates and then the endometrium sheds. Am I right? By and Overall. large. <laughs> by and large. So basically what happens is on day one or day two itself, you know, a bunch of cohort of the uh, 
tiny follicles they start to grow in the ovary out of that only one follicle gets selected this is known as dominant follicle now when that follicle is growing it is secreting a hormone called estrogen so now that estrogen starts to stimulate the endometrium in the anticipation of the pregnancy so when the estrogen levels they reach a particular point now uh, you know this triggers a process of ovulation so this is known as a positive feedback loop and uh, then the ovulation happens after the ovulation the egg is live inside only for about 48 hours in case the fertilization happens in this window great otherwise everything goes waste uh so supposing if the fertilization happens now the egg stays live the levels of estrogen are there the progesterone also comes in and then finally the periods don't happen because there is no withdrawal but in case the pregnancy does not happen the estrogen levels come down the egg dies the progesterone also come down now endometrium has no support so it sheds in form of a period now today most of the women have a lot of i would not say most but many of the women suffer from what is known as anovulation so the cycles are not ovulating i mean i always say why is the damn ovary not ovulating it's like the it's the the primary function of the ovary is to ovulate but why is the ovary ovulation not happening because of multiple factors because of disturbance at the level of the hpo axis because of insulin resistance i mean we have a lot of theories now coming up high insulin levels high cortisol levels less melatonin levels melatonin is very good for ovaries you know the imbalanced cortisol and melatonin affects the ovary doesn't let the ovulation to happen then of course you know obesity bad diet hypothyroidism autoimmune all these things they disturb the ovulation mm -hmm. that's the reason we are not able to conceive you know so multiple problems happening because of the modern day lifestyle lifestyle, lifestyle. Mm -hmm. so in fact i tell this to everyone that we are actually paying the price for being modern in our lifestyle right right of course so the the uh, underlying problem is the ovum needs to be coming out of that dominant follicle correct correct that needs to happen ovulation needs to happen at the right time and after that also see for the pregnancy it's not just the egg and the sperm there are a lot of th things which happen around these two guys <laughs> to make the right things happen so you know we need to have the right luteal phase the optimum level of the progesterone in case the ovulation is not synchronizing with the endometrium then you know ovulation might happen early the endometrium is not ready so all that the problem is basically is the hormones are not functioning the way they should mm. so that's the biggest problem mm. today Be among the estrogen and progesterone um, which is the hormone that you think that is very important both of them both of them both mm. of them mm. i mean both of them they have their own function you know uh, yeah i so mean you cannot they, they out can't be one, one favorite both so of them are important so you need both to be working 100% quality yes and yes. both are under the control of this hpoa axis yes uh, by and large by and large by uh, and large uh. so when there is any disturbances then let's say the uh, discussion that we had in the first 14 days mm -hmm. let's say there is any disturbance maybe the estrogen is not secreted properly mm -hmm. uh, or even after uh, at the time of ovulation maybe the hormones are not secreted properly so i'll give you a, you know uh, an example for example pcos you know in pcos what happens as the name suggests polycystic ovary which means that you have multiple tiny tiny cysts in the ovary now these are not really cysts these are bunch of those small follicles which they are developing but none of them is good enough to finally develop into a dominant follicle and ovulate but all of them are secreting tits bits of estrogen so there is so much of estrogen lot of them are developing but none of them finally ovulates so the multiple things which happen wrong in case uh, you know a hormonal profile is not 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 optimal not optimal not optimal so if you say that let's say if this hpoa axis is acting super hmm. no problem at all then all this issues will come down so you know we as doctors we know that everything is interconnected you know it's not 
we cannot say just the hypothalamus and pituitary. For example, somebody is obese, you know, somebody who has a, a you know, a lot of stress. I mean, she'll have a lot of cortisol. She'll, you know, she's not sleeping properly. She'll have less melatonin. So even if things for some time are fine at this place, probably the end result may not be the right thing. So there are multiple things like hormonal system is not just about hypothalamus and pituitary. There is a thyroid, there is adrenal. So, you know, everything has its own role. Mm. They're all interconnected. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in, uh, in, let's say, a patient with PCOS, how, how significant stress is affecting the PCOS? My experience says that stress is a very big, you know, reason very big reason in fact you know we are actually in the process of writing a paper on this four years back i always used to see that women who are working in a bpo sector they have more pcos you know it was a very small observation then i started reading i started researching the literature and we found out that there's a connection between sleep and PCOS, you know, and this was a real clinical experience of a gynecologist that women who are not sleeping are not sleeping adequately, not sleeping according to their day and night rhythm tend to have more of PCOS. So uh, um, stress also, in fact, there's another observation which I've seen in my clinical practice that the story of PCOS starts when a girl is in class 10th or 11th. You know, this is the time when there is so much of pressure of studies. She has to go for her tuition classes. The parents are after them. You know, you have to study, 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 prepare for your exams. She's constantly sitting in front of the computer, not really moving. The mother is giving all the goodies to her to eat. And, uh, you know, there are other pressures on, on, you know, Instagram. You have to be there. You have to be watching the latest Netflix. Your DP has to look good. You need to look good. So there's so much of pressure. And on top of that, wrong dietary choices, lack of exercise. And then when you go to the hostel, you don't get the right food. Unfortunately, today we don't have much avenues for people to go out and, you know, exercise or move their body at least. You know, I always tell this to people, 20 years back, nobody did a yoga class or nobody went to a gym. You know, our grandmothers, they never had PCOS. So what is it which is going wrong today, you know, which is making the modern woman getting more prone to developing PCOS? I mean, of course, most of us think that we are eating right. Most of us think, oh, 30 minutes of gymming or yoga is good enough. But our mothers never did that. Our grandmothers did not do this, but still they did not have PCOS. So probably they never had stress. They were physically active throughout the day and they never had Zwi Swiggy and Zomato in their life. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think the point of sleep um, that you mentioned is, I think is very critical for every disease that we talk about because, and that's what we talk in my channel as well, to just keep sticking to the circadian rhythm. Absolutely, mm. 100%, 100%. And I tell this to everyone, you need a sleep which is adequate, which is peaceful, which is uninterrupted, and which is according to circadian rhythm. This is the most important thing. Uh, you know, our clinical experience also says that most of PCOS patients have high prolactin, mm. they have hypothyroidism. Now, this again proves that it starts from the brain because all these hormones are released from the anterior pituitary. Mm. So how come that every PCOS patient, in fact, 80% of the PCOS patients have associated hypothyroidism? I would say 50% of them have high hyperprolactinemia. Mm. So that means there's something going wrong there which is making them prone to this. So my theory says that it starts from the stress and lack of sleep and of course coupled with other things, you of know, course. bad diet and lack of exercise and all that. They right. contribute. Right. But I'm sure the papers would come that it is the stress which actually initiates the pathogenesis of Of course, of course. PCOS I'm, also. So I'm going to give you a different picture. You, you might have heard this, but I'm just going to tell you from my experience mm -hmm. where I think PCOS is also starting from the gut. Quite possible. Quite <laughs> possible. I would really love to know your perspective <laughs> on this. <laughs> I'll tell you why. Because all the symptoms, that's why we started with PCOS is not a disease. 
it's mm-hmm. a syndrome yeah. uh it's where um, the underlying problem might not be the ovary per se it is just the hormonal issue yeah it is the poor ovary which is finally bearing the brunt yeah. of everything <laughs> <laughs> so each and every risk factor we're going to go one by one okay hmm. and then hmm. see how that can be connected so you said stress right so in my experience what we have seen is you know you all have the gut bacteria throughout and whenever there is a disturbance in the gut bacteria you have this increased intestinal permeability where there is more influx of bacteria from the intestine into the blood hmm. those bacteria are not supposed to be there in the blood it's supposed to be there in the intestine we have when we did animal studies mm-hmm. it's very clear that stress disrupts this barrier there we have it right so the cells kind of like uh, divide apart and there is increased intestinal permeability so once it goes over there then your inflammation starts so once inflammation starts then your insulin is not able to reach to the cells then your insulin is high then it is connected to all the other hormones so it is not like uh, very Im- it, we cannot be that unfortunate to have so many diseases at the same time ah. <laughs> it's like i always you know think you know we were supposed to be healthy by design how how come god has made such a faulty machine i mean that you need to you know do this do this and then only you'll be healthy i don't you know of course it's good to exercise i exercise myself i eat healthy and everything but somehow as a whole this machinery was pretty pretty much sufficient you know to handle a lot of things unless and until we are grossly wrong so uh, you know in case we are not healthy that means there is something wrong something wrong right right of which course. has been done of course so when the uh, mo- one of the most common problem of pcos is infertility yes. because the ovum is not being released there is no fertilization so people go through infertility I wanted to ask you a practical question where we say that you know decrease the stress sleep more and everything that's the underlying treatment but while they are going through this process mm-hmm. it is a very stressful process very stressful very stressful process very stressful in your experience as a physician we are recommending sleep and dec- uh, decreasing stress but as a patient how are they managing and how do you guide them it's actually uh, very unfortunate in the sense that you know in my opd also i spend 15 20 minutes sometimes 30 minutes explaining them how does it happen and in the end then you know they say doctor aapko dawai de dijiye and then you feel oh my god you know i spent 30 minutes explaining them what it is so i guess you know um, probably they are trying at their own end you know uh, i mean you also would agree that weight is a very big problem you know uh it's like it's not easy you know for many people it's very easy for me to say okay you know reduce stress but what is it which is going on in your life which is making the stress to happen it could be financial it could be your career it could be relationship or whatever there could be multiple reasons so it's very easy for us as a physician also to say okay reduce stress do this do this do this but in the end people want a solution you know what is to be done in case i'm not conceiving now what is to be done let's 